Okay, so we're back and we were talking with Dr. Tracy Gross and our special guest this morning, Dr. Phil Harris. And Dr. Phil Harris is a naturopathic physician and expert on the gut. And we were talking about gut health and the importance of maintaining a healthy gastrointestinal system and how your gut health plays a role in overall health in ways that you never even imagined. And so we were going into into depth, really, Dr. Phil, on, mm -hmm. on gut health. And we talked about the importance, but a lot of people don't know that there are ways where you can really mess this up. Yeah. There are things that interfere with your gut health directly. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned some of those different ways that we interfere. But talk to me about this interference, this dysbiosis. You hear that word sometimes, mm -hmm. but I don't think our listeners are all that familiar with that word dysbiosis and what that means when it comes to disruption of the gut. Well, to put it in common terms, it, it really comes down to what we call balance. I mean, the gut has to have a certain balance in order to function. And um, so let's talk a little bit more about the, the two main things, or three, I think, that mess the gut up. There's several, but there's three right out of the gate. One is, is antibiotics. We mentioned that in the earlier segment. This is anti, it means against. Biotic is life, so it's against life. Our gut's full of a good bacteria against life drugs destroy the good bacteria. Okay, that's going to start to create a dysbiosis. Okay, problem. And this sometimes people are on these four, four and five years in a row, especially as children, because we, we're not taking the right approach at, at, at getting rid of whatever it is we're trying to get rid of. Okay, the body has its own ability to help with these things if we know what we're doing to beef up the immune system. The second one uh, is, is sugar, for sure. And, and the problem with this is that it's almost in everything. Even if we say we're not eating sugar, we're still eating sugar because uh, they put corn syrup in things that, that we don't realize it's in. We, we've got uh, white flour, which is, turns into sugar. So let me read you something from Natural News for just a minute. The sugar industry in the U.S. thrives on a whopping 100 billion, with a B, annual revenue. Whopping. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, and that's, you know, I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, 100 billion is, is pretty whopping. Uh, that is because Americans consume an average of 150 pounds of sugar a year. And that doesn't include those who like it. This is just the average American. I know people who like sugar and they'll say, give me yours. I'll take yours. Um, that doesn't include holidays and birthdays and celebrations, which we always seem to bring sugar. Why are we killing our loved ones? That's what I want to know. So most people are aware of, of the adverse effects of, of, excessive sugar. They're aware of it. They know that it, it causes obesity, diabetes, and cancer. Most people are aware of these things, but they just keep doing it. Well, here's one of the reasons why. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine. It actually affect, affects three transmitters in the brain instead of two. Um, what if you had a loved one that was addicted to cocaine? Would you want them to get help? Is that a real question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah absolutely. Course, well, well, but why don't we want to help people get off sugar then? Because it's actually worse. And however... What is known as, as well-known is that high sugar intake leads to nutrient deficiency. This is not as well-known. Uh, excessive sugar intake was shown to deplete and, and reduce the absorption of essential vitamins and minerals in the body. And so um, this is another reason why we have this dysbiosis and we've got problems because this affects vitamin C, it affects vitamin D absorption, magnesium, chromium, and the list goes on. This reminds me of uh, a scripture I want to bring up right now. Uh, because I believe God gives us the best design for wellness. And there's scripture that says that a sower went to sow, and some of the seed fell on good ground, and some fell on stony ground, and some fell on good ground, but there were fowls that came and plucked it up. Well, when you eat sugar, that's a fowl that's going to pluck up your nutrients, okay? And so when you eat sugar, and almost everyone does, if you're taking good supplements, it's interfering with the supplements. These are fowls of the air, okay? And they're addictive. So this is a principle that, that governs all areas in our life. It's not just the spiritual area. These truths are in the body realm as well. So we have things that are interfering. Uh, sugar is something that we, we, we have to put at the top of the list, maybe even more than antibiotics, because I know people don't go around just craving antibiotics, but they certainly crave sugar. That's for sure. And so this is going to cause this dysbiosis. And then alcohol. Let's talk about that for just a minute. So almost everyone tries to enjoy a half a glass of wine with a nice dinner. This doesn't mean they have a problem with alcohol, and I'm not insinuating that they do, but let me just tell you the facts about alcohol for just a minute. It's in the top three 
most acidic things you can consume in your body. Just two ounces destroys brain cells. They used to think a little bit of alcohol was good for us. They're now, they now know that was wrong. Uh, we have got to understand how damaging alcohol is to our gut as well. The only problem with this is that it's in society and it's how we connect with people. Um, coffee is another one. I, I dare I get on that? I mean, I, I'm, I may not be a popular guest after this. <laughs> I'm headed down the wrong road, right? <laughs> so, so, I mean, but what does coffee do? It brings us sugar and it brings us dairy, which these are not helpful to us either because most people put those in their coffee. And it brings us caffeine, which is a toxin as well that affects the gut. It robs the body of calcium just 120 milligrams of caffeine, if that was injected into your bloodstream, which would be basically one cup of, of basic coffee, nothing high tech, it would kill you if it was injected into your bloodstream, just 120 milligrams of caffeine. It doesn't kill us when we drink it because your body revs up adrenaline to try to save your life again. So all of these things we do daily are messing with this balance that we that we brought up. And and people often will say to me, I'll say, what's your... What's your diet like, Bob? Oh, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And I, I never know what that means until I really dig into it. Because when you f- identify pretty good, you get with it sugar, coffee, dairy, and once in a while, alcohol, which is all bad for the gut. Mm-hmm. All and, of it. And you mentioned something there daily, which I think is important, is that what do your habits look yeah. like? What are you doing on a regular basis? It's not the one-off thing that you do, you know, on on an occasion. Mm-hmm. It's what are you doing on a regular basis? Because what we do on a regular basis, these habits is what really create our life. Yes. And ultimately becomes a part of us. Yeah. And I love that you uh, you mentioned scripture. We call you reverend. Yeah. <laughs> because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, double masters in Christian psychology as yeah. well. Yeah. And also plays guitar and is really good at ping pong. You know, there's like, like Do- Dr. Phil's got lots of talents. I've okay? got lots of things, lots of things. And I think it's important to know this because, you know, people will say, and you still hear this, well, man, I, how come my doctor doesn't talk to, to me about this? Mm-hmm. You know, like why, why is it that we're not talking about the gut when we are talking about all the diseases that you've named? Mm-hmm. And, you know, you also hear, hey, I just, I, I just follow the science. Mm-hmm. Well, here's some science for you to follow. This is from the Journal of Oncology, and uh, we're talking about dysbiosis. And it said, could, it says, could gut microbia serve as prognostic biomarker associated with colorectal cancer patients' survival rates? It's a pilot study on the relevant mechanism. This is from July 19th, 2016. And in this study, they talk about gut disruption being directly linked to colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet here we are, whenever somebody has some sort of problem, what do we do? We treat the symptom of the problem rather than getting at the heart or being curious Mm -hmm. about what that could possibly be. Mm -hmm. And now we know, and this isn't just one study, there's many studies that prove that your gut is linked to cancer. Your gut is linked to your immune system. And yet it is absolutely neglected. People don't know how to take care of it. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, when you're in the oncology unit and you do have cancer, what are they feeding you with? Mm. You know, think about the Jello. What is that made of? Think yeah. about the other foods and the drinks because it's not just in the foods that we eat; it's also in the drinks that we drink. Absolutely. You know, so think about the soda or from whatever part of the country you're from, pop, and the Starbucks frappuccino or whatever that is that mm-hmm. is loaded with sugar and. That's where the majority of Americans are getting the vast majority of their calories from glucose, mm-hmm. aka sugar, is actually coming from the drinks. Yeah. Yeah. And yet it's neglected. Yep. And I think it's time that people know this and they know how to take care of themselves. You mentioned antibiotics, sugar, and alcohol being the top three that are disruptors. Ultimately, I think it's important for us to not only see what's interfering, but also what can we do about that? What can we replace this with? What can we do mm-hmm. better? What are some of the things that we can do different that is might it might be different from the standard that we've been living? Right. But there's right. a different way. You mentioned um, that it's the daily habits. It's the things that we work into our life and we practice on a regular basis. And I am of the mindset that it's a lot easier to break a habit when you replace it with something else mm-hmm. rather than just cutting it out of your life entirely. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Phil, can you speak to that? What are some things that we can do to replace these bad habits? Well, the first thing we have to do is open our minds up to could we possibly be wrong in the approach we've been taking? Because if we're not open to that, then there's nothing I can do to help you. you. You've got to open your mind to what are the possibilities that what we've been doing 
is wrong. Well, let's establish something real quick about American health that'll help us believe that we're probably wrong. 75% of the people over 40 have a chronic degenerative disease in the United States. Okay. Mm. 75% of people over 40 have a chronic degenerative disease in the U.S. We have one doctor for every eight patients. That's the best doctor patient ratio in the world. We're the sickest nation in the entire world as far as de degenerative disease is concerned. Now, make no mistake about it, we do have a good emergency medicine accrue, and thank God for this, okay? But we don't need to be creating the emergencies for them mm -hmm. by ignoring things that we need to know, okay? So any financial manager, and I like to go back to this because everybody uh, you know, knows about money and they realize that they need to manage their money or their lives are going to be a wreck. So financial managers would look at, at averages and say, hey, we've got to change something. We've got to, something's wrong with this picture. Our business is failing. We've got to change something. Well, we have to change something if we have those types of averages. Today, the number one killer in children 10 and under is cancer, second only to accidents. This was not true in 1950. Why then? So if we can establish first to shake ourselves a minute, to loosen up the soil so that I can put some new seed in there, <laughs> then I'm going to tell you there are options. And, and here, here's, here's what they are. First of all, you have to realize that our body's not impressed by where our doctor went to school. And I love this. I, 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 this is one of the statements I've, I've put together. I don't mean to be disrespectful with this statement. I'm trying to tell you how brilliant the body is. Our body's not impressed by where any doctor went to school. Just for me to bend over and pick up a pencil, my body has to talk to itself at 100 million signals a second to make that one motion. If I connect my DNA together, it will go from the earth to the sun 100 times. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, we need to stand in awe of this. If I have two or three PhDs and all, you know that I'm into education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a punk when it comes to this body, just a pure punk. So I have to approach it with such respect. So I'm, I'm laying those foundations to let you know how we have to begin to change what we're doing to the body. Okay. So then we move into what are the options? Let's say we've got a young child that's, that's uh, got a fever and we're worried about it. We want to move to antibiotics really quickly. Well, let's ask a question. What do you suppose the body's doing when, when it's raising fever? I heard Dr. Tracy talking about this at the clinic uh, the, other, the other day at the dinner that we had for appreciation dinner for our patients. I mean, and she did a fantastic job of establishing the fact that the body's trying to raise this temperature to take care of an invader. Mm -hmm. So what do you suppose happens when we lower the temperature? What, what does the invader do? Mm -hmm. It has a heyday, actually. Mm -hmm. You say, thanks. Okay, this is science. This is now, thankfully, a lot of pediatricians are telling parents to, to, to handle this differently now, let the fever roll, give, give fluids. But we have to start respecting this innate intelligence. Then if we say, well, I still, I'm not quite there, Dr. Phil. I got to do something. I got to give my kids something. Well, then seek out natural antibiotics that don't kill good bacteria. And there are several of those. Colloidal silver is one of my favorites. Okay, you can study that, learn about it yourself. You say, well, why doesn't my doctor tell, uh, tell me about this? Well, maybe he doesn't know or she doesn't know. But the other reason is you can't patent natural uh, elements. And if you can't patent them, then uh, I hate to tell you this, but pharma is not highly interested in those because they can't control the money flow. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And you all know that are listening to me today that in any industry, if money is the primary focus of any industry, whether it's a mechanic, whether it be uh, a, uh, a church even, whether it be a doctor's office, whatever it is, you will never get the truth ever if money is the sole focus. It's important for you to know this. So we have to realize it's okay to want to help your children. We know every mother, every healthy mother wants to help her children. But our methods of approach may need to be uh, uh, reassessed. I tell this when I was doing a lot of counseling because I have a, a counseling license as well. I, I tell people it's okay to cope it's okay to cope. Everybody has to cope. The question is, what is the choice of the coping skill? What skill do you choose to cope? If you're going to cope with life stresses, it can't be alcohol. That can't be your tool. That can't be your tool. Everybody can cope with problems with themselves, their children. You just have to choose better tools. And then the more you learn to trust the innate, you finally get to the point where you have so much confidence in this amazing body. You just, you just learn to keep the body purified, uh, keep, keep your chiropractic care uh, going so you have good nervous, nerve communication, and then feed it properly and watch the amazing thing that happens in the body. You know, one more thing I want to say on that. Um, when the body gets an invader and you start to become ill, the body will always do its processes in God's numbers three and seven. Now, I've measured this. So 
once the body starts to go through something like a cold or a flu, the body will try to get rid of this invader in periods of three and seven. If you don't mess with it, the body will work in threes and sevens. You can set your clock by it. So I've told several parents to watch over this. And, and every single time, the morning of the eighth day, if the body's done, the fever will become normal. If it's not, then it'll go three more days. But it's always in threes and sevens every single time. And, and the reason I want to say this is the more we see the body's amazing accuracy in the way it works, the more respect we have for it and the more respect we, we have for our creator. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hmm. Dr. Fell, I love your perspective on this because it's really the the max living perspective. It speaks mm -hmm. exactly to what we believe and what we teach our patients. And I think it's so important for people to be able to grasp onto this because it's so much more hopeful than what the world has given us. Yes. Do you agree? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love that you said there's, we need better tools. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just abandoning one system and then just flying on your own. That's not the case. There are better tools that are out there. You just have to look. You that's have to right. get curious. And that's right. I mean, that's the whole perspective with Max Living that we provide our patients. And that's the whole reason we are doing this extreme health makeover called Love My Guts is to provide our patients and the community the opportunity to not only learn more and dig in, get curious, but really just an outlet for them to hear the information, but then walk away from this event to apply it take control over their health, mm -hmm. full control over their health, that they become their own doctor because the greatest right. doctor in the world is not at the Mayo Clinic, not at John Hopkins. The greatest doctor in the world lives within each one of us. Absolutely. And that doctor doesn't need any help, just no interference. Mm -hmm.